Hey, we are here at Crank. Crank is a close partner of Toradex. About 50% of our customers use a graphical user interface and Crank is one of the great options. Uh, so to learn more, I hand you over to Jason, which will explain you a little bit more. Hi, I'm Jason Clark and I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing here at Crank Software. Um, Crank is a UI tool suite, as Daniel mentioned, and uh, we run across all different systems from MCUs up to MPUs. And Toradex is one of our key customers that we've been working with, uh, well, customers, partners, and we run across all their systems, so on top of Linux, QNX, Windows, whatever system might be. And we build the UIs and give the tools to do this. We've been working with them for a long time now, and on before on their Linux systems, going through different systems, but now we're also working with their Terizon ecosystem that they're putting together with Docker, so you can actually download crank uh, demos directly from the Terizon platform and try them immediately on there. We also give a 30-day evals for our customers to come to uh, cranksoftware.com and try out the system and see how they like it, uh, you know, see the development tools and understand the workflow of how it comes. Uh, you know, we do 2D and 3D applications um, and you can see how we build up rich animations with these devices and make it easier for designers and engineers to work together. What's the big considerations you have when you design a very good looking UI? Um, for the UI point of view, uh, you know, we're more about how you build it, but what we get is more about, you see the tools up here, um, it's more about how do we work with the new design teams. The design teams are graphics uh, designers, motion, uh, user experience people all coming together in one and they need an environment where they can what we do is we allow them to pull in Photoshop files, create animation timelines, work at a level that a designer or an engineer can work inside the UI to help build it up and define those animations. And by doing this, it makes it so much easier and better for the whole experience because when you let a designer control the motion, the experience, it becomes a lot nicer. So you just uh, Photoshop uh, the tool of choice for many graphic designers, right? Yeah. Just that, and how do you s make it move? Yeah, so I had almost got, I'm going to live demo, but uh, this is our, our tool here. Um, you know, this is a pretty high end one, um, you know, where we're showing how things come together. But the designers can pull in Photoshop files, they immediately come into the system within a minute. Um, they can start, all the screens will be laid out. All that work of deciding where everything goes is followed. The how the file system or how this image looked inside of uh, inside of the design files is exactly what you'll see so if I come down to Photoshop here um, let me find something a little nicer here this is a simple washing machine UI it has all the different layout screens and layers that the de designers built um, inside of storyboard if I switch back those to, are just static image files um, these are all the different layers, so I'm not the best to show it, but... Uh, uh, layer system. Yeah, right? this yeah. is all, they're all broken out. So if I come back into Storyboard here, and I say import Photoshop file, I can quickly just say, build this guy, import him, build a new system. Or, somebody's done that one for There we go. Exactly what you saw in Photoshop is now all inside of Storyboard. So all those different screens, layers, they're all built up. If I turn this into, say, wireframe mode, you can see all the pieces. All the images are down here, torn out of the system with the exact locations. When you come over to the uh, side here, the menu, when we pulled in, we retained all the artist information. So if the designer comes to work in this system, he's very familiar right away because we're following the same Photoshop architecture and layout. So they can immediately start working. If they wanted to start building animation timelines, they can easily just come into our system and start recording the screen, and they can start doing um, whatever they would like to do. So in this case here, I can like start moving objects around and doing what I want with them. Uh, I can kick snapshots, and then I can start laying different pieces out inside the system. Um, and what's so nice here is that once I do this, I'll create a new animation, the artist is, uh, the designer is now working on a timeline that they're familiar with. If they want to change the easing, they can actually change how things slide in and slide out to make different easings and such. Um, what I've done here is pretty simple, but you can immediately see if I run this, the animation just comes through very quickly and easily. And this is ready to go to target and run on a system. Um, 
But what's really interesting is when you start looking at, uh, find a different product here. Um, when I start looking at what my designers will do with this, when I give this kind of information to a graphic designer, the control that they get and what they can do with it, they build very rich animations and timelines. It looks a bit like a music track. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's the same sort of thing, laying out tracks and defining how things change over time is really what you're doing. So in this case, when you run, um, if I click, uh, uh, oh, sure, save. If I click uh, this one here, you can see it's a high level thing, but everything, every time somebody hits a button, there's motion and movement, and this is how the new UIs are being done. So developing animation is so important. You know, you can see everything builds up the screens. Every click is a micro interaction. So you see if you click the plus, and you know, this would run on the touch screen right away, um, you know, you get this nice feeling, and you know, it's a, it's a much better way. And like, some of these animations can run on very small, very s contained systems. And you know, and we can also bring in 2D and 3D information. So here we're actually switching over to a 3D model and overlaying these 2D animations on top of it. So it becomes a really powerful system to build up how a UI comes together. And it's, it, it's more in line with how things are done today rather than coding all this up with a sort of a, a coding backend. This, this is uh, the coolest looking uh theater seed booking I've ever seen. <laughs> so, yeah. And with the new boards, uh, Toradex are doing with the faster GPUs, faster CPUs, you can do more and more. Yeah, well, they go both ways. They go down to smaller ones that don't even have a GPU. Um, so that's still important for customers for different levels and price points. And then they go all the way up and we support them all the way across. So we can render or draw with just software only if there's no GPU. And if there is, you can take advantage of the whole 3D optimization. And um, are you in like millions and millions of things out there? Yeah, we're in a lot of things. Like here's some of our customers here. This is a, a thermostat from uh, Emerson uh, Sensi. And uh, it looks cool, the stuff that happens in there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a smaller system and such, but you know, it's got uh, all the different uh, um, designs and pieces to it. So um, this is another product we're in, the Vorwerk Thermomix, which is a uh, cooking device built here in Germany. Um, Although I'm not always the best at knowing how to use it. Nice. It uh, cooks the whole... Yeah, it cooks, it cuts, it dices, it... <laughs> the whole uh, schnitzel with the... Yeah, it'll make your whole dinner for you. But yeah, we're in lots of uh, consumer end devices. We're in uh, also automotive. We're in industrial, medical. Um, the problems that we're solving are, aren't unique to any one industry. Everybody's trying to figure out how to make a more beautiful UI that feels more familiar to customers who are used to using an iPhone or different interfaces like that. Would you say you're like a market leader in terms of shipments or are you the best in terms of quality or what's your, um, what's your so position? It, maybe, I, I, I don't, it's hard to judge those things. I would say we're a market leader as far as the workflow and how people design it and you know, are we the market leader in shipments? It's always hard to tell, but we're getting there with some there's of our many, large customers. Yeah, there. you know, it's a... And uh, there's some uh, stuff happening here with the... Yeah, these are just some other solution. simple demo UIs that we've built. Um, you know, here's a simple home automation on a smaller level chip, but you know, you can launch these different demos. So these are things that we give to our customers to show off, even on smaller systems. Uh, this one has no GPU acceleration or anything. We can still deliver that rich experience that people are expecting to see. It's a Cortex-A5 with no GPU. Yeah, and this is one with a GPU uh, and, you know, you can see how, you know, once again, you can build up a very rich animation with 3D interactions or, you know, however you uh, want to see these different pieces, you know, and understand how to quickly and easily build up very unique uh, experiences. I guess uh, there must be a lot of things to learn for a graphic designer who wants to get over to do this kind of stuff. Or is it more like a UX designers? And there's a huge knowledge in UX. Yeah. And how do people learn all this stuff and figure out cool tricks to do cool UIs? They usually already know them, and what they're doing is they're using tools from uh, different systems to already do these sort of things. Um, and so they're using uh, they're using like After Effects and other tools uh, to build these. The problem is when you come to Embedded, they're handing these design files over to Embedded engineers to uh, to build these things. And when they do that, sometimes the engineer goes off and writes code for a while, and they don't. Uh, they don't realize the end goal of what was being tried to get done. So we make it easier for if the designer needs to sit down in front of the animation timeline and control the design themselves, they can actually do that rather than 
you know, give their design in a tool that isn't for the embedded space, wait months and months and months for the engineering team to code up what they believe is what they were trying to make and find out that it was wrong. We give a very fast feedback loop. So when you see what I was building there, we could run that on the embedded target immediately, make sure the performance, the look, the feel is all correct because there's so much iteration when you're building a UI that it causes a lot of change. Everybody's very opinionated on the user interface and how it looks and feels. Um, and we've done so much work on that iteration process. And one of the really cool things we do is we do a Photoshop re-import. So you know, you build a UI for a couple months and then all of a sudden you get a lot of customer feedback, design changes. Um, a new Photoshop file shows up with a bunch of these changes. We can immediately pull that Photoshop file in and within minutes have an updated look and feel to the UI so they can actually integrate these experiences. Sometimes that's almost a start all over pro on other systems because to change all the code, to take all these changes in is so much work. And you know, once you understand that this process is so iterative and you start building your tools that way, it makes it so much faster and easier. Are you using some kind of AI in there or? No, it's not so much AI. It's just the same way you would merge code, we will merge Photoshop files into the system. So if you come back to the system that I showed you earlier, um, let me see where's I here. So I took this system. We, you can see what it looks like already. Um, if I come over to Photoshop, I think our designers made another version where now all the things are circles, they're darker themed, you know, and this happens all the time. If somebody doesn't like the color sets or it doesn't look right on the LCD. Um, if I come back over to our storyboard application, I can just say re-import Photoshop. Um, I can go find that file, browse, open it, and then uh, they'll come in and it'll start merging. I could do piecemeal and just pick pieces to come in, or I can just say select all, which is what I'll do here. And at that point I can say finish, and I've updated the UI here. Um, if I come back to that animation we did before, all the pieces have been updated, but you know it's uh, now it's circles instead of squares. You know all the UI changes. If they change location, we would have taken that into consideration and updated it and given the. We also have a graphical compare to let them see the changes, so they can understand and pick what they want to come in or not. So they can still make decisions. It's not an all or nothing choice. And just uh, to have a look uh, here in the back, there's a uh, there's a bunch more demos around here. Yeah, here we're showing our scalability. Some of these are MCU-based platforms. So this is, uh, you know, this is down at the MCU world running on FreeRTOS, and you know, you can still give a very rich experience inside of here. Um, here we're on Linux-based systems on ST's parts. This one here is another MCU-based one where you can see, you know, even though it's these small systems that just a couple of years ago nobody would ever expect to give this. Uh, level of uh, user experience um, down here, these lower level systems are becoming a lot more richer. Uh, this one has uh, got an M4 also that some people might be using to do different kind of things in the embedded world. Yeah, right? this is an M7. This one here is actually a uh, A7 plus It's an A7 an and M4 so they can actually offload some real time work when it goes into low power mode, the screen's off and control it that way. You know, there's a lot of different customers like NXP and such. This one's actually um, this demo here is actually showing how we can run on Android. So um, here we've taken over the Android home screen, but uh, you can run Storyboard. We can take over that to give a unique experience where you can run on Android. Um, but if you come back, uh, we can still run your, can still do the whole app ecosystem and run uh, different applications inside of here. So you become just like an app on Android plus the launcher? Yeah, we can take over the home screen and then you ha instead of having the Android home screen, you want it to look like your application, you know, but we can still do the standard Other apps. apps. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one's just showing sort of that 3D home I was showing you, what it looks like on an end device here, just showing the the bringing together of 2D and 3D interfaces. This looks complicated to make, no? It's like a big work. We also import FBX files. So I have a 3D uh, designer created an a a a FBX file with the animations in it. When we pull the FBX file in, we also pull all the animations from the FBX file. So they're all defined how, when we turn this and pull this house apart, I could actually build this once the uh, designers actually built the 3D model correctly. And then uh, there's a lot to do with the firmware updates. People need to update their devices to get new security and stuff like that. And that's independent to all the yeah, UI? Yeah, that's uh, what our customers do under the cage. We have partners and other partners who do that stuff and also customers do it themselves. 
we are the UI layer and then we give a nice clean communication layer down to the underlying system so you build a very clean architecture. And in terms of security also, maybe you have to make sure uh, your UI is securely talking to the other stuff? Yeah, it, there isn't so much security as far as access from the outside because unless somebody's standing in front of the application, it's the UI. Um, there is some stuff maybe with voice interactions and stuff, but our customers control that. We are in a Everything's an event to us, so touch screens are an event, hard buttons are an event, voice uh, commands are an event, uh, gestures could be an event, and they come to us, and then we define the actions that happen when they come in. So.